Freedom Band. And I'm Tom. And today we're here to introduce you to our latest project. This is a 170 extended Mercedes Sprinter four-wheel drive van. So it's the extra long wheelbase. We're working with 15 and a half feet of floor space inside, which is perfect because we built this van for a family of three. This van was influenced by a past build that we did called Fitzroy. And it's great for a family because you can sleep three and seat three safely and easily in this van. Working with this family was such an honor because they are true craftsmen themselves. Um, this family owns a company called Blair and Son Floor down in Puyallup, Washington. And all of their work is just so beautiful. They have a great attention to detail. So when they came to us and asked us if we would build their van out for them, it was such a big compliment for us and we're so grateful to work with them. This van is gonna be so perfect for this family because they love to go climbing, they love to go to music events and love to be outdoors with their family. So I'm so excited to hear more about the adventures and memories that they create in this van. This van was really exciting for us too because we got to do a lot of new innovative stuff that I think that Tom is gonna to be the perfect person to explain to you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Well, hey everybody. I wanted to uh, get started and show you some of what we've done here to the outside of the van. We'll start outside and work our way in. So. Starting on the front here, we've gone for the California tuned off-road bumper with the Smitty built 12,000 pound synthetic winch. It's really nice, all steel construction. It's got a bull bar, the shackles for recovery and everything, it's ready to go. It's got a wireless remote. We're really happy with this. The guys really knocked it out of the park with this unit here. But what is really unique to this build that I was really excited about fabricating is actually up on the roof, you can see we've got dual 52 inch light bars. And as far as I know, there's no other vehicle in the van world that's been put out with dual 52 inch curved light bars. So I'm pretty excited about that. One of the amazing things about this setup is I was able to actually tighten up the spacing between the light bars and the roof and the roof rack. There's a maximum of approximately half an inch of air gap there. And knowing about aerodynamics, if you decrease the volume of the space that the air is allowed, the velocity reduces a lot. And these light bars are prone to making a lot of road noise or wind noise. And by reducing the, the area of allowable air surface to pass the light bars, the velocity gets cut way down. So this light bar setup is actually silent on the freeway. It doesn't make any noise, which is kind of a surprise as, as much as it is a relief for me. We just drove here about 50 miles and uh, I'm pleased to say there's no wind noise coming from this roof rack. So when I met with the Blairs about this project, I was interested in adding a little flare. And so I was like, hey, would you guys be open to a stereo? I mean, they're really fun. And they were like, yes, that sounds good. What have you got in mind? And I was thinking, well, we could go all marine stereo equipment with a dual zone and put some boat tower speakers on the roof. And they were like, that sounds good. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> you took my suggestion and you wanna go with it? All right, let's do it. So we ended up fabricating a roof rack designed around wakeboard tower speakers. So we've gone for a full JL audio marine stereo equipment uh, build here. But what's unique about the stereo is we actually are powering it from a home theater receiver. And that gives us the advantage of having the option for a dual zone. And what that means is that we can have our zone one stereo turned on that's inside the van. And then we can turn on the zone two, which is actually outside the van. Since the clients were open to suggestions, I also added in say, hey, would you be interested in a full wraparound lighting system as well for your roof rack? I would recommend it. So we did right side, left side, and rear auxiliary scene lighting. And the lights actually have custom diffused lenses. So they're gonna spread out the light really well. And they're all accessible on the dash with four switches. They're all powered up through a relay system with 
a nice heavy duty power supply. And uh, I'm just really excited about how it turned out. It's really uh, nice to see the lights get turned on and everything operate. One of the nice things that we were able to incorporate on this van, which we do on most of our vans where we do include a roof rack, we've actually designed it to fit around the Afiyama F80S roof awning. The nice thing about that is it's low pro mounted right to the roof and there's no rain coming through the edge. So it's a really um, user friendly setup. It's also very low profile as you can see. Okay, so this van's got the stage six van compass, two inch striker lift. And what that means is the suspension's been actually raised up about two inches. That's given us clearance for larger tires, which we've gone for the Relation Race Wheels RR6S. The reason we have been sticking with this wheel manufacturer is this wheel actually carries the highest load rating of any wheel on the market. Currently rated at 3,650 pounds. That's a step up above the Method MR701s, I believe they're called. And then we've wrapped them with the BFG KO2s. Tried and tested, these wheels and tires are gonna last a long time. I personally think that the KO2s can be kind of played out because everybody's using them, but you can't deny they're a quality wheel and tire setup. The KO2s are one of the smoothest running all trains on the market, and that's why they're so popular. Uh, we've actually gone for five wheel and tires on this build and these are actually 32.2 inch and surprisingly we were able to fit a full-size spare underneath the van so we were going to be doing a rear door mount tire carrier but we're actually going to be switching that up to a rear door ladder so there's more to come with this build but something different we've done on this project is we've done we've done a full leaf replacement with the agile off-road heavy duty 5400 pound leaf springs so those are on and let me tell you, this van is driving nice. I would say it is very comparable to a sports car, although it's sitting on 32s, 32.2s, and it's probably an 8,000 pound van as it sits. And we're expecting it to get slightly heavier, but it's built for it. One thing I wanna show you guys is inside the wheel well, we have some new shocks. We're running the Falcon adjustable shocks. They've got a three position tab, so you can come out to the side of your vehicle, reach in, and by the flick of a switch, you can change from three different settings, which is gonna be a soft tune, a custom tune, which is gonna be based on the valving designed for the vehicle, and then there's gonna be a firm tune, which is great for job sites. You can jump in and out of the van, you wanna camp and lock it up. You can put it on firm. You're gonna go down the freeway for quite a while, you can put it on firm, you know, lock it up, get it a little tighter. And then if you're off-roading, you can come out and set it full soft. And so you get the pliability you're after and have the adjustability. Here on the front of the van, we've done the stage six van compass, two inch striker lift. So we've done the full suspension lift as well as some aftermarket Fox shocks. And we've retained the OEM struts which this combination actually handles really well. It drove down the road awesome, and I'm confident it'll handle really well off-road as well. In order to fit the larger tires, we do have to trim the wheel well openings. So we've gone ahead and moved the mud flaps back, and we've trimmed the interior compartment for the tire. So we've got that extra clearance to clear this extra rubber. Okay, you'll notice here on the exterior of the van, We've added the flare space body flares, and these are in the bed area of the van, and they add approximately three to four inches of space on either side of the bed area. So you end up with a much wider sleeping area that you can consolidate your bed front to back and turn it side to side. You'll see here, we've also got the turn overland awning windows on these flares. So those are a little bit unique to this project and we're really excited with how they've turned out. So on the back of the van here, you can see we've got our roof rack assembly with lights and the lights are actually integrated underneath the rear of the roof rack. That's gonna be really helpful for tree branches. These vans are really tall so they do tend to get pretty comfortable with the trees as well as awnings and overhangs and things like that. There's quite a few uh, obstacles for the top of these vans they might hit. And uh, as such, we've got a pretty durable light setup. 
So Tom, thank you so much for giving us a tour of the outside of the van. You're very welcome. On that note, let's go ahead and head inside, get away from these mosquitoes, and I'd love to give you a tour of the interior. The first thing that you notice when looking into this van is the beautiful walnut cabinetry that they chose throughout their van. We also have walnut butcher block for all of our tables and for the countertop. When you first walk into the van, you see the dinette. The dinette is also going to serve as a bed for their son a nice little hangout spot for the three of them, um, and then his modular turns into a little couch area. What we did differently on this dinette than the Fitzroy is that rather than having an ottoman that slides out on drawer slides, we actually have it as a separate unit so you can pull it out and use it as a third seat so that they can all sit at the dinette together. In the dinette seats, we've also included seat belts. This will allow for their son to safely ride in the van with them. One of the seats is a DOT seat setup, and that's the seat that faces forward. The kitchen galley in this van ended up being a great size for quick meals on the go while you're traveling. We have a two burner propane stove with a sink um, enclosed by a glass lid walnut countertops with a countertop extension at the end, lots of drawer space, and a flip open cabinet, along with a Richer Frigo 3.2 cubic foot DC refrigerator. In the overhead cabinet, we also have under cabinet lights, um, a little charging station above the kitchen galley, um, with access to our water pump, tank heater, and water heater. Behind the kitchen galley, we have a bench seat, which will be a wonderful place to sit here um, when you're getting dressed or putting your shoes on. There's also a ton of storage inside of this bench seat. And then across from the bench seat, we have the closet and bathroom. The feature that our whole YouTube family has been waiting for, we do have a full wet bath with a composting toilet in this bathroom. This family wanted to have additional space for closet storage. Um, the closet also allows skis to go into the garage, which we'll show you in a little bit. So in order to shower in this restroom, you do have to take out the toilet, but it's such a good use of space because you do have your full wet bath um, and then also a toilet in place to use the restroom. To use the toilet in this, van when you close this door your knee does go into the hallway a little bit but there is some play with this door so it does allow your knees to push in it works really well for someone who's five foot five like i am but for someone with long legs this might not be the most comfortable solution this works for this family because they don't mind having the door open um so it was a great solution for them if you want a larger wet room, this space can totally have a larger wet room. You just compromise some of the closet space. So if you're someone who a wet room is super valuable to you, I would take a look at Fitzroy because it had such a big wet room. You could totally have a really nice shower in there while still having the toilet in there. Um, there's no modular aspect. Right behind the wet room, we have a closet. And this is going to be just a big, nice area for storage and tall items. There is also a door that flips open that allows the length of skis to come into this closet. In this van, they do sleep side to side and that just gave them the space to fit all of these other key components inside of their build. Inside of this upper control panel above the closet, we have a space for the receiver. We also have their control for their underbody air filter fan. And above it, um, we have light switch, heater, battery monitor, and another light switch. Above the closet space, we do have a roof mount AC system, which runs off of their batteries. In this van, we have a 500 amp hour lithium battery bank, and that will just give them tons of power to be able to play their stereo system without worrying about their batteries 
dying, and also to run their AC system when it's hot. Above the bench seat, they do have a microwave, which will allow them to heat up food on the go pretty quickly. In the back of the van, we have a queen size bed. We added body flares to this van by Flare Space, and that gives them up to 76 inches of sleeping space side to side. One thing about having the flares in the 170 extended is that they're, the panel that they go into isn't super wide like the 144, but it works really well for this couple because the husband is will fit perfectly within the flares and then the wife will fit perfectly without the flares. In the back space, they also have additional storage with a couple of cabinets above their bed and then a shelf next to their bed with a little charging station. Behind their bed in the door panels, they have two more speakers and this is the last of the six speakers inside that really are strategically placed to create this surround sound experience when you're inside. We included a WeBoost LTE booster in this van and as soon as we pulled up to this spot, we all had either no bars, it was 1X, I don't know what that means, but not great service, or one bar of LTE, and it brought us all to four or five LTE bars. So this thing rocks. Something that's unique to this van, the bed platform is a mo three panel modular bed platform, so it can be removed, as well as this wall between the living space and the garage. The purpose of that is so that if these clients ever get a motorcycle, they can actually fit a motorcycle in this van as well. Hi guys, I'm going to show you our headliner cabinet with the concealed 40 inch smart TV. Over the TV there's actually a good amount of storage here. You can fit all kinds of stuff in here from your window covers to blankets to pillows to extra jackets and dog treats. I've added a security option here just to be a little extra safe and you're going to see me struggle with it for the first time, but there we go. So there is actually a lock on the cabinet so it won't open while you're driving. And now you can see what we're hiding up there. This is a, another feature of what I would like to consider a revolutionary touch for this van build. And what I mean by that is since, we're, since our audio system has been done using a home theater receiver, what we were actually able to do was we were able to connect via a digital optical audio cable to this TV. So we're able to use our marine stereo system for a 6.1 full surround system that's gonna be really awesome for watching movies with. So you can be back in bed in the back and you'll have the sound coming out from behind you in the speakers. And the only way I was actually able to integrate that system was to simply avoid the Sprinter MBUX factory stereo. So the factory stereo in this van is completely untouched. It's totally factory. We basically avoid all of the Mercedes interface and we just build our own. See, that's kind of the main thought process and the whole endeavor of Freedom Vans. We don't live inside of a box and we're promoting and building in that same regard. All right, here we are at the back of the van. We have our garage system set up here. On the side, we've got a larger 40 gallon water system. It's a 40 gallon fresh water tank, as well as an incorporated water heater system. Here we have a mixer valve for a rear shower, a high pressure hose to wash down your goods, as well as an onboard air compressor system. This air compressor system is good for reinflating tires up to 37 inches tall. So you can air down when you go into rough, rocky places or you, and you can air back up on the way out. It's a really nice, convenient feature. On the driver's side here, we've got the power system, which is a 400 amp hour lithium battery bank. And this whole top section is actually easily removable to access all of the power system. So that's a nice feature. We've even built in storage here underneath the power system to allow ease of storage for your goods. Um, 
One of the main things we like to do is we really keep our power systems compact and um, give you guys as much space as possible in the storage area. Also, you notice we've got some hooks lining the headboard here. Those are gonna be super handy for packs and hats and all kinds of good things. Thank you all so much for following along, watching this video to the end. This was a big van with a lot of things in it, but I think that this family is so gonna enjoy all of the features and custom innovations that are included in this van. If you loved the video, give us a thumbs up, follow along, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Bye, thanks.